This is a hotly requested topic in the gun series. How can we pick up and swap guns at runtime? Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy. Here to help you. Who, me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become reality by helping you make a robust gun system for your game. I was actually a little bit hesitant to do this video because it's more like demo scripts type of work instead of the core system, but this one's been requested so many times I had to do it. So in this video, what we're gonna do is take some prefabs that are gonna be in the level, spinning around that we can go run over, pick up, and I'll swap our guns out. We're not doing an inventory system here. You can only have one gun. And whenever you pick it up, you'll lose your current gun and you'll use that new gun. These guns that we pick up probably wouldn't be the same as what we spawn with because so far you're spawning with like the maximum ammo. And a gun pickup, usually in games, we have a little bit less ammo. So we'll also be creating some ammo pickups in the level that we can add into our current ammo count. There's a lot of kind of smaller changes to do here, but the core of what we're doing is we're gonna make a prefab that we're gonna have spawned into our level somewhere that has a script like a gun pickup type of thing as a reference to a scriptable object that will be the one that will replace our current active gun on our player gun selector with. That part's the easy part. There's a couple tweaks we have to do here and there to just enable us to be able to swap out guns across several different scripts. I think all the little tweaking here and there in that script and this other script is probably where you're getting lost if you haven't been able to do this yourself. So let's hop in and take a look at how would I approach this. Let's start with taking a look at some prefabs that we'll use to actually be the pickups. We need discreetly different items and whatever we use for our guns to spawn into the world because they just need to be a little bit different things. They may share the same model, but they probably need to be a little bit more fancy than whatever we spawn into the game for the player to actually use and shoot with. To save us some time, I put together some prefabs already. We can see it's using the exact same model for our M4A1 pickup. It still has our shooting system here that's not really relevant. This is actually a prefab variant from our original gun that we're using for the player. That's where that particle system is coming from. I added in this fancy other particle system to make it look like, ooh yeah, you can pick up this thing. The only other thing of note here is that this gun has a collider. We're going to make it whenever the player collides with this, we're gonna invoke some function to make the player pick up this item and discard their current gun. Most likely pickups will need to be on their own layer. So if we go to the project settings, which if you don't have it open already, is just edit project settings. We can go to tags and layers. And we'll just create a new one called pickups. And then for any of the things that we need to pick up, we'll change them to that layer. The last piece of that is we need to set up the collision matrix for this particular layer. We only want maybe the player and the pickups to collide together. That's under the physics tab down here towards the bottom. Default and pickups shouldn't collide, transparent, blah, blah, blah. None of these should. The player should, enemy should not, floor should not, bullet should not, and pickups should not. So the pickups and player should be the only two interacting with one another. We can place these wherever we like in our scene. And to save some time, I'm not gonna just show me placing them. We'll see it once we get to the demo. Cool, now we have a rocket, some ammo, M4, and some ammo. Let's hop into the code to set up how can we actually pick up new items. For each type of pickup, we're gonna have a some script that does similar things, but not exactly the same. So for our gun pickup, we're gonna put this in the demo namespace because we're using our player gun selector, which is also in the demo namespace. So we want this to happen on a collision, we're going to add required component type of collider. We don't really care what type of collider, as long as it has some collider, it'll work. We'll have a public gun scriptable object gun, and that's gonna be the gun that the player should be able to pick up. And it might be nice if this gun like spun in some kind of direction. We'll say it's gonna spin on the Y axis by default maybe. So an update will make it spin. And the key here is on trigger enter, which is called whenever a character controller or rigid body makes contact with this trigger collider. We'll notice all of those ammos, the M4 and the rocket launcher I all had a collider with is trigger true. So in here we can do if other dot try get component, the gun selector, then we know the players come in here. Most likely it's only ever gonna be the player that collides with this because of how we set up the layers, but we need a reference to that gun selector to do something whenever it's come in because the gun selector controls things like which gun is the player currently using. So far we haven't made the gun selector support picking up a gun though. For now, we'll just say pick up gun and we'll implement that in just a second. After they've picked this up, we'll destroy this object so we can't keep picking it up. Cool, let's go to that gun selector and make that pick up gun. And if we take a look at this, it looks like there's not gonna be a really simple way for us to be able to pick up a gun. Right now, awake, finds a gun from our list of available guns. We can apply modifiers, but awake is really the thing that does all of the magic. So we need to do a little bit of refactoring here so we can really pick up a gun. Awake right now is doing two things. Number one is it's selecting a gun, then it's actually spawning in the gun. 
So why don't we move the setup to its own function. And down here, we kind of have this despawn functionality. Whenever we pick up a new gun, we're going to want to despawn the gun. So we're going to make a public function that just does this. Then we can do a new public void pickup gun, where first we despawn the active gun, and then we'd set up this new gun. Then set up gun, we'll get a new clone of that scriptable object, we'll spawn it in and do some IK magic. Let's hop back to the Unity editor, in our M4A1 and our rocket launcher pickups, let's add that gun pickup script. We need to give them the gun scriptable object. So what we're gonna do is make a copy of our M4A1 and call it M4A1 pickup. Most of the stuff's gonna be the same as it is right now. Maybe the difference is we want a new ammo config because the one you pick up maybe doesn't come fully loaded. So instead of defaulting to max ammo, maybe you only get one clip of ammo. All the rest of these configurations probably should be the same. So in our scriptable objects, we really only needed one new one. The rest of them are reused. This is where we're getting the benefits now of all this complexity that maybe has been lost on the benefits of. We have all the same configurations, and if we need to make a change to any of these, it's going to affect both our pickup and our base actual M4A1. And I think that's really cool. On the M4 prefab, we have to give it a pickup. So we'll give it that gun pickup. If we click play and go pick up a gun, We can see in the console that's mad at us about this destroy immediate that we used in the gun scriptable object whenever we were despawning that gun. So instead of using destroy immediate, we can change this to be destroy, set the model to be active false, so it'll be immediately not shown, and we'll destroy it at Unity's convenience using destroy. That should fix our problem. Let's try it again. Run over to go pick up the M4. So we walk over it, our guns adapt, we get this new gun, we have 30 bullets in our current clip, zero extra bullets. We can see that the crosshair, because the rocket launcher had shooting from gun and the M4 uses shooting from camera, crosshair is a little bit messed up. So we need to do something about that. And there's one other problem here. If we press escape, bring up this customized gun menu, which doesn't make a lot of sense for this type of game, it gives us back our rocket launcher. So let's go and fix a couple of these problems. In our demo player action, where we're setting up the crosshair, right now we're only checking and doing anything with it if it's shooting from gun. We haven't considered that you can change guns at runtime. So if it's not shooting from the gun, we can actually do this where it's gonna anchor just directly to the center of the screen, just like we did if we didn't hit anything. That's all we need to do. That one was easy. In our player gun selector, this is where we have the problem with giving us back our previous gun. Remember that we call apply modifiers from our UI controller, which despawns the active gun and then calls awake. Really, we'd like to set up the gun that's currently equipped, but we can't use the active gun here because remember the active gun potentially has some modifiers applied. We wouldn't want to clone and then apply new modifiers or something like that. So we need like active base gun. Meaning in setup gun, whenever we're going to create this active gun to be a clone, we could do active base gun to be this gun. Because in apply modifiers, if we set up gun and then we apply the modifiers to the active gun, we'll still have our active base gun unmodified. In our setup gun, we'd expect this to be the base gun all of the time. So we can just say active base gun is going to be this gun. Active gun being a clone later on in apply modifiers, we're going to override potentially multiple scriptable objects for that active gun. So instead we should set up the gun, the active base gun, setup gun will change active gun to be a clone of the base gun and then mutate this active gun. So our active base gun will remain the same. Before we go do some kind of final demo, let's set up that ammo pickup. This one's going to be in our demo namespace as well. And we're going to make it still do this spinning bit. It's still going to need a type of collider. And we're going to need to know which type of ammo is this. Because if we currently have like an M4, we may not want to pick up rocket ammo, at least in this case where we don't have like a inventory or something like that. So we're going to filter to not destroy this object if we're not using the current gun type. We're also going to need to know how much ammo is stored in this pickup. We're going to do the same on trigger enter, and it's going to look very similar to what we just did with the gun. We'll try to get the gun selector. 
And we'll also make sure the gun selector active gun type is equal to the type that we defined above. If both of those are true, then this is ammo that we should be able to pick up. And we'd want to increase the ammo of our gun. We might be tempted to just increase the ammo amount, but we might go over the max ammo in this case. Since it seems like there's some logic we need to do, I'll put the code to actually add ammo into the ammo config. After we've added that ammo, we'll destroy this game object. Let's go to that ammo config so we can add some ammo. And add ammo. We'll just check if the current ammo plus the amount is going to be greater than the max ammo, then we're just going to set the current ammo to be the max ammo. This way we prevent over ammo pickup. In any other case, we're just going to do current ammo plus equals amount. Remember, we want to deal with the current ammo, not the current clip ammo. We probably want the player to reload and we don't want to mess up their current firing rate. They shouldn't be able to just pick up ammo and continually fire. Each clip has a finite size that needs to be reloaded every so often. Back in the Unity editor, we find our pickups. Our M4A1 and our rocket ammo pickup both need the ammo pickup type. The M4 should be of type M4, and let's keep it at 30 ammo. The rocket ammo should be rocket launcher. Let's say that this is going to give us two rockets. I think this object's rotated, so we'll have it rotate on a different axis. Remember, it's really important to keep all of these with is trigger true, otherwise it's not going to work right. We never created a rocket launcher pickup, so let's do that. We'll just copy paste it right here in the project panel, call it rocket launcher pickup. Again, the only change here is we're going to create a different ammo config to have the same max ammo and clip size, but maybe you only get two rockets when you pick it up. Make sure to assign your rocket launcher pickup as the gun that should be picked up. We're going to give the player the Glock again, and let's click play. The pistol weak, it's very inaccurate. Start going all over the place. We'll run over, pick up the M4. Boom, we get one clip, much stronger. We pick up this ammo. Now we have a reasonable amount of ammo. Now we press escape, we don't change guns. It does mess up our ammo. That's something we need to work on a little bit. Now we can pick up the rocket launcher, shooting from gun. There we go. We can go pick up the new ammo over here. We get two per pickup. I think this was a great video for me to actually do, even though I was a little bit hesitant on making it, because I think it really highlights the benefits of using this customizable, scriptable, object-driven system over just kind of hard-coding everything into a single gun. It became very easy to create different configurations for, oh, the pickups only have this much ammo, and then we can add in that other ammo, and it can work that way even potentially on different levels. We could have different guns that have different amounts, and each different pickup could have different amounts, and you're only really changing one scriptable object. Coming soon, we're going to do real inverse kinematics that work a little bit nicer than just the flopping around stuff that works right now, and I'll explain how the player IK is going to actually work. If you want to be notified whenever that comes out, make sure you've liked and subscribed to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. If you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash alumacademy, click join on YouTube, that works as well, or even super thanks. All of those can get you up here on the screen. And for the awesome supporters, I've got Autumn K, Matt Parkin, Ivan, Rulin, Ify Obelis, and Dwarf. And at the tremendous tier, there's Bruno Bozic. And at the phenomenal tier, there's Andrew Bowen. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.